Hey, what's up? I'm Swift, a DFO veteran. I've been playing this game since the introduction of the female gunner, which came into existence years upon years ago, back when DFO wasn't quite the DFO that you know today. I'm gonna try to keep my intro simple and straightforward. You click this video because you, my friend, currently play or have played this game before, or maybe you're the curious sort and you just want to evaluate my content. Whatever the reason, the video that you're about to be watching is going to be an evaluation regarding a particular dungeon that I believe has been overshadowed and unappreciated by the DFO community ever since its introduction. In case the video title didn't give you the biggest hint ever, I am of course talking about, you guessed it, Assault Mode. With the level 100 cap reaching our area, people are desiring to reach endgame gear as soon as possible just to get a nice head start towards the next level, but as of right now our level cap still remains to be 95. There have been a good lot of echoes and PMs that I've gotten over time, and they all ask the same question. How do I gear progress properly? Where do I even start? How do I become a big boy like all the other plus 11 amplified whales of this game? There's been a good lot of people who still aren't too sure about what to do with themselves once they've reached endgame, so I figured I'd talk about the gear progression part of it and where I start on this long journey towards gearing up. I've given advice here and there to a select few, but perhaps a video explaining why I feel everything starts with assault mode could reach a wider audience. I've always wanted to help out the community and connect with them in a way that I could be personally proud of myself for. Plus I want to see where I can improve on video making as, as you probably can guess, I'm not really too advanced in this sort of field, but I figured that I really wanted to make something like this. So for this video I want to go ahead and try to avoid any type of advice where I just tell you what to do and just explain expect you to figure the rest out, as I don't think it's going to help out the newcomers, which is why I'm going to explain the, well, the why. Why should I do what it is you tell me I should do? What is the purpose of this assault mode that you speak so highly of? Will this even be relevant once the 100 cap hits? Well, pull up a chair, sit down, and I'll gladly enlighten you of the beauty and the systematic genius of assault mode. Okay, so imagine this. You finally hit level 95 after going through your entire storyline. Awesome. You got all these new side quests and stuff that unlock different sections of endgame content, like Dawning Crevice 2, Tabers, and of course, Raids. Now you feel on top of the world and you can finally be on the path to being one of the big boys. But where do you start? How do you even get to that true endgame point? Because as you may already know, that even though you have hit level 95, at a new player's average power level, no one's bringing you into raid parties, you can barely do DC2 without a carry, and every time you try to do the Tabor's dungeons in an effort to obtain Sky Fragments and possibly Tabor's epic gear to boot, you find yourself having to lose 600 to 800k just to pay someone else to carry your weak ass, and all of these require friends in order to bypass. But there's so many roadblocks, so how can you, an average player, get in on any of that good stuff? Welcome to Assault Mode, a special dungeon that most who are trying to become Harlem graduates ignore, but only a select few in the player base cherish and value enough to run daily. I fall under the ladder, and here's why. So while Assault Mode does serve to grant you Harlem Legendary equipment, which are essentially just the pre-evolved versions of Harlem Epics, as well as save you aberrant crystals for when you eventually upgrade your Harlem Legendaries into their Epic versions, there is an interesting niche that Assault Mode has that no other dungeon shares in that game currently, and that is the ability to be able to grant you a free Grimmerier on all of your endgame gear. When I say Grimmerier, I'm of course referring to amplification. You know, the pink colored text that you see on armor, accessories, special equipment, and sometimes even weapons if you're feeling ballsy, that give you that extra oomph in whatever your class's role is, be it damage or supporting. Whales absolutely love this, and min-max players strive for this. But wait a minute, as I'm sure you DFO vets are saying to yourself. Now Don and Kravis can do the same thing, can't it? I can find tainted epics there too. Well, technically, yes you can. However, there is a crucial difference between Don and Crevice and Assault Mode in terms of the usefulness of said drops. Now I'ma let you guys in on a little secret of mine. You see, 
Tainted Harlem Legendary drops are actually more desirable than Tainted Harlem Epic drops. The reason is due to versatility. You see, Harlem Legendaries are actually more flexible in upgrading to the desired epic that you wish. In Assault Mode, the only types of shiny drops you can get are one of the following. Swiftly Mobile Legendaries for armor of all types, Luminous Searcher Legendaries for the accessories, and Stealthy Scout Legendaries for special equipment. It's very important to know that when converting Harlem Legendary armor to its epic counterpart, the type of armor does not matter. What I mean by this is that you can snag a Swiftly Mobile Leather Armor and with Strawberry Nose Della's magic, you can convert it to any Harlem Epic Armor so long as it matches the armor slot. Here's an example. Say I found some Stealthy Scout plate pants. Now normally you would think since they are plate pants, then that means the only upgrade to this would be the Eternity of Chill, which is the name of the Harlem Epic Plate Bottom. This is not necessarily the case. While it can upgrade into that, it is not limited to only that upgrade. For as long as they are Harlem Legendary Bottoms, you have the ability to convert those nice pairs of pants to any Harlem Epic Bottom, whether it's cloth, light, leather, heavy, and of course, plate, because the recipes you get from Della that convert Harlem Legendary Armor to Harlem Epic Armor only require a Stealthy Scout Armor of the same slot. Those slots again being the aforementioned cloth, leather, light, heavy, plate. You see what I mean by versatility? Now even though DC can drop Tainted Epic Gear which can potentially give you a head start on converting progression, the problem with that is that the epics themselves may not work for your desired subclass. And once it's a Harlem epic, it automatically has a predetermined upgrade pathway that cannot change. If that upgrade path doesn't suit your subclass, you basically have a dead drop. A perfect example for this would be a Soulbender. They're a synergy subclass whose endgame kit is built for leather armor. Never in a million years would you ever see a Soulbender in anything that isn't leather armor since the early level passives that they have complement the set effects of that leather armor significantly, so they're pretty much restricted to only wearing leather armor. Should you do DC and come across tainted Harlem epic armor that's anything but leather, it would be a waste for them since you can't convert it to be the type that you want since it's already a Harlem epic. You can, however, still save it to transfer among your other characters who could use it, but that's a bit of an issue there as well, since transferring Harlem Epics from one character to another requires a whole lot more resources than a Harlem Legendary, including an unreasonable amount of Epic Souls. Look at this, 144 Epic Souls just to transfer one single Harlem Epic? Ridiculous. Compare that to transferring Harlem Legendaries, which only requires 60 Legendary Souls and some high-grade Elemental Crystals, and it's clear which one is more feasible to accomplish. Luckily for you, Legendary Souls are not that difficult to obtain. For starters, you know those tainted energies and emblems of heroes that drop while doing Assault Mode? Well, with the help of Timothy, you can convert the tainted energies into the emblems, and with enough emblems, you can just flat out buy any Harlem Legendary of your piece from Timothy, and just grind them up for a free Legendary Soul. Hell, if you want, you can even buy each of these items respectively from the Explorer Club shop, in bundles, assuming that you have enough Explorer Club currency. The point I'm trying to make is that there's many more ways around farming up Legendary Souls than Epic Souls. This is leagues easier and much less stressful. But back to Harlem Legendaries. Remember, all these possible Legendary Gears have a chance to be tainted if you find them in Assault Mode. You cannot cheese your way into getting a tainted Harlem Legendary just by buying them off Timothy and praying to RNGs that one of them will be tainted. I know, I've tried. It doesn't work that way. Tainted Gear can only be acquired via drops from their respective dungeons. You'll know if an equipment is tainted when you view the item in your inventory and you see that small red question mark that's slapped on it. That indicates that the equipment has been tainted by Otherverse energy and must be purified in order to use. Purification can be done at any time and it won't disrupt the upgrade order of the tainted Harlem legendaries. So if you got the resources, feel free to do it at any time. 
But for the sake of this explanation, let's assume that you don't purify the item just yet. Now should luck come your way, and you are bestowed with a glorious Tainted Harlem Legendary, it's time to upgrade. Alright, so now you've acquired a Tainted Harlem Legendary from getting lucky from Assault Mode. Congratulations! So what's next? The next step would be upgrading that bad boy into a Harlem Epic. But before you go upgrading it, you would first want to check out what Tabor's gear you're trying to go for. Are you shooting for the plate armor Tabor set? Light? Heavy? As mentioned before, it's the armor that matters for this step. Accessories and special equipment don't count for this explanation because they already have a one-track upgrade pathway. But armor is a bit different since depending on what Harlem Epic armor you choose to get, that armor determines what Tabor's counterpart it will transition into. If you're confused at all about how Tabor's epics relates to Harlem epics in any way, let's go talk to our good old frosty mage in white, Joshua. Long story short, there's a character balance patch that came out on October 22nd of last year which allowed a linkage between Harlem and Tabor's to where Harlem epics can be upgraded into Tabor's epics through recipes that you can buy from Joshua for a fraction of the cost that it normally takes to get Tabor's armor. It is because of this patch that Assault Mode became very important as a daily routine for me to take care of on multiple characters because multiple runs equals multiple chances and as long as I find any tainted Harlem legendary, I win. So our upgrade path now goes from Harlem Legendary to Harlem Epic to Tabor's Epic. Choose wisely when selecting what Harlem Epic armor you're going for because each Tabor's Epic armor set is linked to their exclusive corresponding armor type. For example, say you want to shoot for the brightest primordial star set, which is the Tabor's light armor. When you buy the recipe needed to upgrade Harlem Epic armor to Tabor's, the set must be light as well which means that you're going to end up buying the armor set that belongs to the Armor of Heart Eating Devil. That's the set name for the Harlem Epic Light Armor. So make sure that when converting your Harlem Legendary Armor to Harlem Epic Armor that you aim for the Armor of Heart Eating Devil and then from there the rest is history. Light for light, plate for plate, etc. Whether the armors are tainted or not, you can still be able to upgrade them. It doesn't have to be purified until you're ready to do so. So now let's imagine you got all the pieces of the puzzle. You somehow managed to gather all the golden materials necessary to get a single character to have all tainted equipment pieces and converted an entire set of tainted Harlem legendary armor, accessories, and special equipment all the way up to Tabor's. You didn't have to spend a dime on any silver amplification grimoires and you started from the grounds of assault mode up to this point. Now. How are you going to purify all these things so you can finally get those extra boosts in efficiency and power? Well first off I want to say congratulations on making it this far after hearing all of my rambling. For your destination, your final stop will be... Klonter. Meet Klonter. He's a Dark Elf merchant that's found in Ophelia Post who specializes in all things amplification and is the only NPC who has this trait. When you open up his shop, you want to buy the recipe for the Otherverse Energy Purification Scroll. All materials needed can be farmed in their respective dungeons or be bought from the auction hall. You can also just buy the recipe straight up from the auction hall too if you want to speed things up. But just know that the whole is greater than the sum of its parts, if you understand that analogy. As the scroll says, it will purify any tainted equipment and randomly add an amplification stat, being strength, vitality, intelligence, or spirit, to the equipment. So depending on your character and what stat you're trying to shoot for, you have a 1 in 4 chance of getting the desired amplification stat that you want. But let's just say that after going through all of this and finally coming to this part, you end up rolling something that you don't need for your character. Does that mean it's the end of the road? Did you just go through all of that grinding? all of those darn recipes just to meet your end at some 1 in 4 chance? Oh of course not! I wouldn't have made this video if that were the case now would I? Meet the conversion spell. THE answer to failed RNGs of amplification. This bad boy can reset dimensional stats and instead let you choose which dimensional stat to add to the equipment. Simple. Crazy right? However, this can only be used on purified items. You still gotta get the purification scroll first. 
If you happen to get any bad luck, then you just gotta buy the conversion spell, which also can be bought from the auction hall if you're impatient like me, and you don't mind spending gold on material conversions, because I'm sure that if you've reached this far, you just wanna get this over with and not fumble around with recipes just to save a few gold. Though make no mistake about it, everything that you're hearing from me is still leagues better than buying a single Grimrear from the auction hall, because that shit is expensive, and I mean expensive. Have you checked those prices? Ridiculous, man. Conversion spells are a little bit up there in price, so if for you to fully 12 out of 12 yourself with amplifications, you may want to pick up at most 12 of these. Unless you're some lucky little snowflake and you happen to RNG the stat that you wanted on first attempt. Lucky bastard. And with that, that explains everything. The beauty and simplicity of assault mode. Now, if you're a whale on DFO, then this entire guide should be meaningless to you. If, however, you're like me, and you want to get the best out of this game for less, then I'm sure this guide will serve you well. I did my best to try and explain everything to be as idiot-proof as possible, and I know I was repetitive on a lot of things, I'm very sorry about that. But trust me, once you understand the pathway once, you'll never forget. For starters, I would highly recommend making a decent chunk of max level characters who can grind Assault Mode and DC2 at the very least, but mainly just Assault Mode as your Tainted Gear progression starts from there. Um, I didn't really make anything else after this script, so everything I'm just going to be saying is kind of a little bit of a rambling. Um, I know I'm probably going to get some questions in the comments that's going to be asking, do you think that this whole content will involve level 100 as well? And I'm going to assume that the answer is yes, because unless one of those new four dungeons that is, uh, that's going to be coming out on the 100 cap, if any of them are similar to Assault Mode, where you can get tainted, legendary, or unique gear there, then I'm sure that this guide will just apply to that one as well. Just replace Assault Mode with the dungeon for the level 100 cap. Um, if it's not the case, which I honestly think it is, because nowhere in the guide did it tell us any confirmations about level 100 uniques being transcended into level 100 legendaries, which could be transcended into level 100 epics, etc. I don't think we've gotten any confirmation on that. If we do, I'll definitely update this video, or at least just put it somewhere down in the comments. The whole point of me just making this was just to give people an idea about why Assault Mode exists at all, and why you probably shouldn't skip it if you're trying to do your DC2 dailies, which I'm sure many people in the game always want to do. They always want to do DC2 first, but they always skip Assault Mode. I figure, if you want to waste 57 to 60 million for a silver amplification Grimrear, then I'd figure that maybe you have a chance on getting something for free and just work your way up from the ground up. The amount of money that it takes to get a tainted Harlem Legendary all the way up to a Super Tabers equipment, and the amount of money that it spent to get from that part to Endgame is leagues cheaper than getting a single Amplification Grimrear. Sure, you can get the Amplification Grimrear and then, you know, mission accomplished, but all that money that you spent just to get that one thing where you can just get it essentially for free by just using the tools that are available to you. And this video kind of explained the beauty of that dungeon that helps you get the ball rolling, which is Assault Mode. Anyway, I'm done rambling. Um, the links in the description are just my Twitch because I like streaming DFO. I don't have a specific schedule on when I do it. You just have to check in with me or maybe just look into the echoes and then you'll just see that I'm streaming. Um, and subscribe to the channel because this channel is pretty much just going to be me making DFO content. I have a lot of other ideas that I want to make regarding like, say, um, a full complete guide on certain subclasses or all subclasses, but I only play, you know, a few with the male priest being my favorite class of the bunch and I love the exorcist I can talk about exorcist all day but um yeah anyway the twitch link is in the description feel free to follow if you'd like I don't have a specific schedule on streaming so just check back in with me every now and then if you play the game and that's really all I got so thanks for watching guys and catch you later